Okay, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's Kate Richberg, and it is that time. It is time for Bead Shop Live with me, Kate Richberg. So let me get my face on the screen and ready for all you all. Give me just a second here while I maneuver over there and here I am excellent alrighty let's get this get this I'm all arranged I'm ready coming at you live in person right now all right well it looks like there's a bunch of you on the uh, feed which is awesome I love seeing everybody here and I hope perhaps it's because of this wonderful knot that captured your imagination. Um, it really captured mine. Um, I uh, am really excited to share this with you. Um, we have Janice over on YouTube saying hello to everybody over there. And we have our Gita over on um, on Facebook saying hello to everyone over there. So it's great to have everybody here and up and running. So the, the thinking behind this, um, this project, I have had this uh, in my sights for a while. No surprise, right? I come up with a project and then I let it simmer and simmer and simmer. And oh, my mom just jumped on. My mom says, one of my favorite people, Kate Richburg. Well, you know, I kind of have to be one of your favorite people because you're my mom, um, but right back at you, ma. Um, but anyway, so this has been uh, simmering on my beadboard for a while, and it's gone through a couple of color uh, incarnations here, and I've got a few more color choices for you to look at today as well. Let me fix my collar is a little crooked. There we go. Um, so in honor of kind of this festival, kind of I tried to be a little festive myself wearing my beautiful Oaxacan embroidery and some homage to Oaxacan jewelry that I made. So, um, so, uh, so we're going to treat today like a festival, like a bead festival, which is going to be fun. But I really wanted to share this first wrap. This is what I'm calling the lace knot. It's kind of an amalgamation of some different basic macrame techniques but it all comes together in this really cool knot. And so I think you're gonna really like making this, not only incorporating it into a wrap, but also it could be a great standalone project. So let me get it on the screen so you guys can see it. And let's just jump in and do this, shall we? Alrighty. So, oh, <laughs> thank you, pa uh, Patricia. I'm glad you like these earrings. I do too, gosh darn it. So let me go ahead and solo this one and tell me if you can hear me okay still, um, that it's uh, good. The, the feed should be even better now. Um, I got a brand new device for streaming and yeah, it's pretty HD if I do say so. So I think it looks good. Um, so you're really going to see things up close and personal. So, um, so I think it's good. All right. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Carrie. I love it. Um, so Millie, thanks. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you like it. Um, but let's look at this center, this center wrap right here. Okay. So, um, and of course, you know, before I get started, I, you know, I've been, I was so excited that I didn't put this up, but let me just say real quick, you can follow us on Insta at Bead Shop, join our Facebook group, The Bead Table, like and subscribe. If you're watching us right now live on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We really, really appreciate it uh, to get those viewers and those followers. And of course, everything that we're working with today can be found under Festival Wrap on BeadShop.com. So uh, that's done there. Okay. Let's get back to it. So what you're going to need, let's look at the wrap itself. Okay, I this is the exact board I've been working on. So it's a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. You guys are okay with that. Um, let me pull this up just a little. 
<laughs> You're going to see a little bit of my messy table. Sorry about that, about that one. But I'm wearing some other kind of wraps that I would say kind of fall into this festival category, kind of, right? They kind of have that same summer feel to it. This is that gateway that we talked about a little bit last week, right? This is one that I did. It's under Kate's Knots. Um, and I'll be honest, I can't even remember what this knot is called. Uh, I should have actually looked. But this is kind of a similar, can you see, it's very similar in what I did with this lace knot. Can you see how this knot and this knot are almost exactly the same, except there's a bead right there? And there's no bead right here. And it's reversed. It's going towards the inside of the wrap instead of the outside like these are. Okay, so it's really, really similar to this. Okay, and then, of course, I've got my herringbone uh, ladder, uh, which we are bringing back in a couple of different ways. This herringbone ladder I did for the Great Bead Extravaganza a while back with the Raku beads and this is just such a simple and easy and great way to just show showcase these herring bones. Drea has it, she's got two projects. One we kind of did together it's fresh herringbone wraps but there is a big herringbone cuff that's coming that's of Drea's design that's just a maze. It's gorgeous. So you'll see those coming up in um, August and September. So after a bracing drink of coffee, um, let's take a look at this one that we're going to look at today. And so like these that are single wraps, except for this gateway, which is a double, um, each of these segments could be used on their own for their own wrap. Okay, so I just want to go over the materials with you because this really can be, as I like to call it, a choose your own adventure kind of gig. Okay, you don't have to um, have to use my exact colors. Now, um, John just asked, can I add beads to that lace knot? You can. Let me take this one off and let's take a look at them again side by side kind of more closely the one and you'll see this you guys when I teach you this knot you'll see exactly where the bead goes but see here where's my all Emily would be so disappointed if I didn't have my all here it is okay and there's a whole page of my classic Kate knots that are uh that are up on bead shop gosh this stream really is clear Wow, that's great. I'm glad to know my new device is, is working perfectly. Great. So see here, this is the double lark's head. It's a lark's head pointing down and a lark's head pointing up. Okay. And can you see the bead I put on right there? Okay. Here, it's that same thing. It's pointing down and it's pointing up. But instead of the loop coming out of the knot on this side, it's going inside so after you tie this first loop and before you tie the second one you would put the bead on right there and depending on the bead you use like you can see there's plenty of room there you could get beads you could definitely bead this and maybe i'll put a couple of beads on i've got some extra of these um of the regular shadows that i used in the piece so this should be fine so you definitely can Okay, so this is the first wrap. I thought I would just, you know, start it off with a lot of a, a lot of bang for your buck right here. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over, and I want you to see how this is connected to the back. Okay, see how I just I really basically just started. There's no like silk wrapping or macrame or crimp or anything. I just put the button right on the end. I'm going to do a little bit of a variation because I always like the variations. So you could use a button, but we're also super into, I'm so into this, I used it over here too, this jumbo swivel, which is great. So especially if you're doing this as a single, because look at how with this single wrap with this knotting, um, how killer that just looks. You don't have much knotting there, 
and then the clasp takes up a lot of it there as well. So, um, so this is a great alternative if you don't want a button. And then I went in, I wanted a pop of color and I'm really glad you guys are remarking on the colorway that I used today because it is a little bit of a different colorway for me. A little, I mean, not a lot, but I wanted something that was kind of, I don't know, but, you know, kind of had a, I mean, it's so overused, like kind of a boho feel, right? Kind of a little bit of a faded summer feel, a hot summer day feel. Um, if I were going to like Coachella or like um, Outside Lands in SF or, you know, one of the many music, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, whatever, any of those music festivals, right? Um, this is definitely, I'd be wearing this on my wrist. And Coral is saying that it reminds her of a Southwestern theme. And it does kind of have that, that stonewashed kind of a little bit bleached from the sun southwest feel. So I'm glad you're picking up what I'm putting down. So I used the 0.5 millimeter Chinese knotting cord. I used it in the Poseidon colorway because I wanted a pop of blue because I wanted to use these. These feel like little turquoise, like long, you know, turquoise beads, but they're um, the the bugles, you know, the Miyuki bugles. But I wanted to have that color kind of throughout the piece as a unifier, okay? And I also, you could work some color in here and not have this be um, all one color. You could, a monochromatic palette here. You could do one color for the base and one color for the knots, okay? So here, then, I wanted to do something also. So this could be a its own wrap. Now here we move into uh, this section with, and you can see if I pull it right up to you, you can see it with half Tylas, half Tila beads, eight dots, and then that little pillar of the bugle bead in between. Okay, so here it fits perfectly. Half half Tila, eight dot half Tila, and that bugle bead. So that's the little road I went on there. Now you could, instead of the half, you could put two quarter Tylas and even continue breaking up that color. Okay, so it just really, or you could also use just one single Tila bead like this and maybe use an 11 knot on both sides of it there. You could play around with the sizes, but um, I think it looks good. Or you could use this whole Tila, whoops, sorry, whole Tila bead over here and then have the eight dots here actually, and you could counterbalance them on either side. So all of that will work. But I think I was in love with this and I just wanted to keep doing it. So you can see I started with the eights, went up to this section here, and then finished it here with more macrame. Okay, and I'm going to show you how I ended the knots from this section and in the macrame here. So see how it kind of tapers down, but I don't mind that look. I think it's nice and neat. Okay, now here is one. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Janice did this too in one of her pieces as well, but it's these um, copper flat kind of washer beads that we carry. And they're very similar to the circles of bronze, but these are in copper and they're contemporary, not vintage. And I've used, these however are old, the um, Russian blue uh, trade beads. They're just gorgeous there. Okay, so they, they I macrameed down here. And I just wove the two strands. You can see in a figure eight. Can you see that there in the figure eight? And it goes across like this. And then I just made that as long as I needed it. So I kept taking it off and trying it on. So this section is a little bit longer because maybe this section ended up being a little bit shorter. So you just need to keep trying it on. But I used all 10, two, four, six, eight, Nine. I guess I used nine of the ten um, washers. Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, I used ten. All ten of them. So they're there. This would also make this section, I think, 
would make also a really beautiful like choker or short necklace for the summer, right? And you could just do this in the center. You could macrame on the ends like this and then have the ends of your strands go into a leather crimp. It would be gorgeous, right? Uh, then I went into, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it, I think, on the broadcast. I did a chevron pattern with these ADOTs. And I'm going to show you, I used one of our resources, our um, loom weaving um, sheet that Emily made for us, and I charted this out. Now, if you want yours to have a little more contrast, you can dial it up with some brighter colors and then some, some darker colors to really make these pop. But can you see how I started the chevron going one way? Then I stopped in the middle, kind of did three the same, and then reversed it and went the other way. Okay, and I'll show you how I charted that out. Then I wanted to be a little different, as if the other ones weren't different enough, right? So I wanted to get one of those Jardin barrels in there. So I did that. I macrameed, put the Jardin barrel. I didn't crimp it or anything. It's just laying on there. And then I macrameed on this side. And then... Janice will remember this, and some of you guys will remember this as well from like old school beadwork. Um, these are the distressed pumpkin padres here, but to my eye, they look almost amber, like that vintage copal amber that I'm so enamored of and that we used to be able to get, and now you can't find it for love or money, really, right? And so, but this just had like a such an old school bead shop feel to them um, when we used to have those huge copal amber necklaces and stuff they were gorgeous so I wanted to repeat kind of finish like I started so I used three little pillars of those bugles I used what a surprise a shadow bead in copper um, and two of those copper shadows worked with those um, distressed pumpkin padre beads and I'm going to show you kind of what to do to make all of this um, line up together. But I thought they were like little treasures, right? I think the contrast of the distressed um, <laughs> and ambered of exactly. That's a good one. That's so funny. Uh, Kathy, I'm going to put that on the screen. Exactly. Ambered. Exactly right. Um, and Janice loves it. Oh, I'm glad you like it, JP. Thank you so much. Um, and so then I just wrapped it and then I finished it with, because since it's a festival, a little bit of a boho, I put a couple of little dangles on. And this lotus, this, this one, and I meant to look and see what the heck it was called. And now um, I closed that window. Let me go to it real quick and look and see what that one is called it's called the puffed lotus is what this one is and it's kind of two different sides it's one of our beads from tiara cast and we just love it l u v love um, and so i just made a little dangle and if you were making an earring to go with this you could just make this earring and then maybe i don't know drop it from one of these beads or whatever. But this would also be beautiful as just a simple earring here. And of course, I used the hand of hibiscus, this um, hand flower. And then um, I did that same kind of embedding the Jardin crimp at the end, right, like this. Then, you know, we had them. I love them. I never use them. I felt like they were languishing a little bit, so I wanted to reintroduce you to them. These are our sand cast beads, these Crobo beads um, and they are I just love them we carry them in a bunch of different colors um, and it just works perfectly just hanging out at the end there and it gives a little bit of extra length so you can add or take away length down here at the end as you need um, but I just wanted a nice statement on the end and this blue it's just such a summer summer color I think it's gorgeous right then here i just tied a knot i mean i could have done all kinds of fanciness i could have put a crimp or a more macrame or whatever but i think the style of this bracelet really lends itself to a knot just an overhand knot and then i had a few of those russian blues left so i just put it 
and you can see how I inverted. I have the shadow on the bottom and on the top there as well. And then this loop is just large enough to accommodate that button. Okay, so that's the, what do I want to say, the anatomy of this piece. Okay, so th the main thing I want to show you guys today, though I want to show you some of the different transitions in between and how I add and take away thread. Um, let's start with this lace knot. Okay, and I have some notes here. I made some little notes so I wouldn't screw it up. And um, I want to show you, oh, and you want me to try it on? Sure, I'll um, let me, and I'll lay these down so you guys can look at them here for a second, and I'll put it on. Okay, so let me give you something to look at here, and here, and the herring bone is still on my wrist, here. Okay, and there's also, let me see if I have it here. Bear with me here just a second. Um, and let me see if this photo snapped over. Yes, maybe. Yes, okay, I want to, um, I just wanna grab this photo real quick so that you guys can see this. And I'm going to go back and get this photo. I kind of forgot that I took these photos. So I want to show you these. My beadboard is a little linty in these pictures. So you're going to have to forgive me. But you guys understand lint, I think. <laughs> so I'll put this on. You guys look at this real quick. And let me uh, just upload these photos into um, our broadcast. So bear with me here just a moment while I do that. And this one. And then we'll get right to that knot. Uh, whoops, no. This one right here. Open, open, open. There we go. All right. So those will come up for when I need them. Let me go ahead and just wrap this around here. And you guys can see it as I put it on. The thing about this wrap, like every wrap that we do, you're constantly sizing it. Especially, I find that once you get past like a double wrap, right, you have to really try this sucker on to make sure that it fits. Um, because there is kind of a lot of bulk, I guess, to this piece. And there are some, um, some strands are a little bulkier than others, right? So you want to make sure, and this is just how it wants to lie. So I'm just going to let it, let it do that. Okay, so here is, let me get back to the comments over here so I can see what you're saying. Um, so here is, this is kind of where the, the knotted portion comes together. And then you can see there's that second portion, the third. And this third one, it's pretty big. It really does, you can see as I flip my wrist around, it wraps around like maybe not quite one and a half times, but it wraps around a lot. And then here's that one, that kind of the stacked uh, laddered portion. And then here's that last one here. So I think it really does have a great, a great look to it. Oh, and thank you guys so, so much that you're, um, <laughs> yeah, it does show the lint. I know, I'm sorry. Janice was like, you're going to get a new board if it kills me. And so I, of course, what did I do? I grabbed this really dark black one that's windy. Um, I'm going to uh, change it out, though. Um, hey, Jordan. I think she's out there. Jordan, yeah. would you bring me a fresh gray board when you have a moment, yeah. please? Um, there you go. That should make you happy, JP, uh, and everyone else, so you can't see the lint. Um, but anyway, so there it is. So... Let's just, well, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so let me um, start you with some of the stats and some of the particulars here. I really do love it. I just love this piece. I think it's, um, thank you so much. Um, 
I think it's happy. I think it's it says, hey, we're going places safely. <laughs> um, it says all of that. There we go. Okay. Look at that. So um, let's start with, uh, so I used for this one, I used the distressed rows for these knots for this one here. But I also grabbed, I was really torn with the color that I wanted to use with it. So instead, uh, for the demo I'm going to share with you today, I grabbed Distressed Denim. And I am using 1.5 millimeter um, in width. Okay. And so uh, the particulars here, and it's my little scribble, so it's kind of hard to see. But what we do here is we're going to cut the whole wrap, since it was five wraps, the whole wrap I cut 86 inches because our leather comes in four-yard increments, right? So I cut 86 inches for the base, and then I had about 58 inches left over for the lace knot, okay? So you can, it just depends on like your length and the length that you want it, uh, want it to be. I should measure this for you door to door, shouldn't I? So let me actually take this off one more time. I know you guys are like, Kate, get to the knot, but let's get these particulars out of the way. So here... with my old tape measure. Now my wrist is about six and a half inches. So this whole piece door to door where the button loop ends is 37 inches. Okay. But I had, I had a good amount of leather tails left here. So I could, um, you know, you've got a lot of wiggle room here. Okay. So, um, so it just depends on, you know, what you, what you want to do, how you want to do it, how you want to, um, what do I want to say? How you want to, uh, the length, like you could make, you know, you could stop and start this again, like, um, Allie does in her pieces when she makes them those long 12 wraps, right? Those are just, those are crazy and exciting and cool. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we do there. Then, um, let me, I'm just trying to load, bear with me here. I'll put this here so you can see it. And the leather that I used here is, um, 1.5 millimeter. Now, if you look at, and I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see this. If you look at the leather cord, now you could use any combination of letters of leather here, right? You could use um, one millimeter and 1.5. You could use um, like the 0.5 millimeter and one millimeter you could use the 1.5 millimeter and the two millimeter. I hope all that makes sense. But essentially for the bottom of this, the base of the knot, you want to um, use the larger leather. So if you're using, if you're not using the same size, like the 1.5 millimeter that I used for both of these, right? You, um, could just go ahead and use the 1.5 on the outside and the two millimeter on the inside, if that makes sense. Okay. I hope I didn't hack that explanation up too much. So, <clears throat> but I'm going to use the 1.5 millimeter for everything. Okay. So, and I'm also going to make, so let's cut this long piece. I'm actually just going to cut the 58 inches for the lace knot, and I'm going to use the remainder for this. So let me get my 58 inches, 58 inches. 
Is that right? And then this one should be 86. That looks about right. Bear with me here just a second, because of course, what does my leather look like? One big tangle. There we go. So let me cut this. And then this guy should be, let me measure the base. And again, you can always look up in our lookbooks, especially in Allie's 12 months of wrap bracelets. Um, yeah, you've got plenty left over um, for your um, remaining, uh, your remaining wrap. In Allie's year of wrap bracelets, she goes over how to, or this is actually 94 inches left, um, so you've got plenty, but cut away about your 58 for your first, for your um, knots, your lace knot, and then just use the rest for your wrap. But Allie talks about like changing leather in your wrap and stuff like that, because a lot of those ones that she made are all 12 wrap, and they're, they're just crazy. But she's super, um, she's, um, super uh, ambitious that way. Oh, and Christine said, and this is good. This is a good tip. So she says, Kate, I've just learned how to screenshot. Now I'm a screen shooting monster. Could you pull it, put your cheat sheet back for a quick shot? And yes, if you're watching this on your device, here you go, Christine, let me get this right down my little thing. This will make more sense to you when I, uh, so I would cut that 58 first, and then whatever the remainder is, I might have cut mine a little shorter, a little bit long, but around between 86 and 94 is what you'll have left. So let me get my finger out of there, and now it's time for your screenshot. But that's a good way to do it if you're watching some of these and you want to really stop on one of the, the, the processes that I do. So we're going to find the center of this uh, 1.5. We're going to put this aside, and we're going to find the center of the long 1.5 that's going to be your wrap. And let me get to, let me find that clasp. So in this case, I'm going to use this swivel clasp. Let me get down there. There we go. And that's just here. Now, what I did, I hope I saved it. Well, I can use this from last week. The way that I attach this to my board is I just get a little piece of my string, my twine here, and I clip or, you know, affix my, my, button there and I clip it right on. Now on this side over here, you guys, we're also going to clip it. And the thing is, is you need a good um, kind of a good tension here for this piece so that when you're doing the knotting, it's nice and even and straight. And so the way I do that is I clip one leg on each side here with the clamper so that it's given me a little bit of space there too. Okay. And you can see there's a little bit of bounce to that. So there it is. Okay. So let's get a little bit closer and I'm going to turn this around so you can see this. And the way that the knot starts is it tapers in. Whoops. You can't see that at all. There we go. It tapers in just a little bit. And then it kind of gets wider. So that's kind of how it goes. So I'm going to slide my um, my leather, of course, a knot is in there already. So I find the center and I slide it up just here. Okay. So now with the two top loops, okay, I'm going to start.
Oh, 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 oh. Bottom loop under and over and through. There we go. Just look at your notes, Rich Bird. <sighs> okay. Now this one goes over and under and through. I can feel you all rooting out there for me. There we go. And under and over and through. Okay. For the love of Pete. All right, let's repeat that. Let's do it again. There's a big collective cheer from the audience. You guys, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. But just bear with me here. I've, I've got it. I had to not even look at your comments because I was so horrified. Let's go over to the comments. There we go. Okay. <laughs> here we are. All right. Bracing. <laughs> what if we move? I, you know me. I'm like I'm dogged. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let it go. Okay. So here we go, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna walk you through this. So just bear with me, and then I'll start it again. So see how after I made those knots, and you'll see this. This will naturally occur. See how the your leather is crossed this way and this way, okay? And this is what you want. Can you see that cross right there, how it crosses over like so? You just wanna be consistent with the cross, okay? So see how this side is crossing under and when I bring it over here, it's crossing over. So I'm gonna be consistent in that way, okay? That this one is crossing over and this one is crossing uh, over. So now, I have my top loop and I loop over and under and through the loop. Okay. And I do the same. You can either do both sides together or one side here and one side here. It just depends on what you want to do. I'm going to finish this one up. So the lower one, we go under the cord, okay? Over the outside cord and through that loop. And see how, and, and it's easy to get messed up. And you saw that I struggled and struggled for a long time on air. <laughs> but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to let you guys see that. I mean, who cares, right? The joy is real when you get it. Okay. So here's this one. And can you see how this bracelet, my knotted bracelet, they're on the outside. Okay. And so this can be confusing. See how your two half hitches are pointing indoors here and how these are pointing outdoors. And I kept flipping them out side and not inside okay now patricia what patricia is saying and it's a good um it's a good tip patricia you could make a square knot at the top to make it stationary and that actually may be a good idea and maybe i'll try that doing a square knot with this um just like the square macrame knot and then pulling into this but I kind of wanted this to start like this, so that's what I did. But, you know, 
what are you going to do? I think, you know, either way, try it out. So this side, we're going to go again, we're going to loop over the outside thread, under the outside thread, sorry, over the outside thread, under the outside thread, and see how it makes like this little number four like that on this side. Then we go under like so and bring it up. Then we're going to go under that thread, over this outside thread again, and through the loop. Okay. And see how it crosses? This is naturally crossing. Okay. So here I go under the thread, over, and I get that inside loop and I go through. You want to tie on the inside or else you'll struggle like I did. The struggle is real. And here on the inside and then I go under and over that same loop and through. And someone asked a while back, can this be done with hemp? I think you could do this with any cord, really, right? So I'm going to, and you want to keep your tension, especially with the leather. It's a little funny. See here how the, the tension wants to go a little wonky. But just, I'm going to tie this side, and then we're going to, then I'll tighten it up. So over and under and through. and under from the inside under that cord over the cord and through gosh you would have thought i'd never tied a knot before but so there you have it and see again it wants to cross so just let it okay so now, and that's exactly what it is. And Shelly, you are saying exactly what this is. Lark's head knots on the sides. That's what this is. But it's just two of them, and you're doing them down one side and down the other. And we're switching the cords as they come in the middle. Okay. So let me get, um, let me grab, um, I have this piece of thread here. And I'm just going to use some of the Chinese knotting cord real quick. I've got this piece left over from last week's project. And I want to start, um, I'm going to move this aside, and then we'll talk about transitions and stuff in a second. But I want to explore this a little bit with you now that it's in my head. Um, and this is just, this is how you get your aha moments, right? So let's say that maybe we wanted this in the middle of a piece, right? Instead of at the very end. I'm going to use one of these circles of bronze and I'm going to put this, you know what I'm actually going to use? I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this distressed brown is what I'm going to use because it goes a little bit better. So here's this, the distressed brown. Okay. And I'm going to add my little leash to this if I have another one here it is and let me tie this up and I'm going to attach it here and I just saw and you guys are right see this one here this last one, how it, uh, I think the first knot I made, see how I came, I came over. So yeah, good eye. Let me actually fix that. I need to go over the top, underneath, and through. That's why it wasn't tightening. There you go. Good catch, everybody. And this under and over thank you for catching that and uh, there there we go good eye good thing i got that 
high def camera. There we go. Now we're correct. And you can check these as you go along. And you can see where I might add the bead. So I'm going to come back to this one in a second and we'll add beads. But let me let me just get this one going. Let me scoot it over a little bit here. And we're going to look at starting it with that macrame. And if this was in the center of a bracelet, right, you could start it here and then, you know, do your knots or whatever here. And then you could go off from this end, too, to create your wrap. Okay. Let's see. So uh, where's my, here's my Chinese knotting cord. I'm going to do this with Chinese knotting cord, just in a contrasting color. So maybe it'll be a little... Um, bit easier also to see that knot definition. Now this cord, this will show you the difference between really heavy knots or really heavier cords and really thinner cords. So you guys remember how to do, let's hope that I remember how to do it, the um, flat basic half hitch macrame knots, right? I'm going to start on this side with the P. I found the center of my, of my thread and I'm under and through the loop and push that up and make my key, my P side over here over over the tail under the center and through the loop and let me just do two for fun here and here and tighten and here over and under and through okay now, for this one, okay, we go from the top loop. We're going to go under the, the, or over this cord, under the cord, and we're going to take it inside that loop that's right here. Okay, so we go from tying the knot on the outside. Can you see that? from on the outside of the cord to the inside. Then I'm going to finish this knot and I go under the outside cord, then back over that outside cord and through that cord loop. See that right there? And then I pull it up. And so can you see how that knot is kind of reversed. So we're going to move that out of the way. We're going to do the same thing here. We go over the thread, under the cord, and tie it up. And we're going to go under the cord, over the cord. and tie it up. Whoops. Put that backwards. Use my awl, get that out of there. There we go. I go under from this way. And I think I tied that first one wrong. Over. Sorry, it's so small. Under and through. Come on. I don't know if, see how these, and I'm glad I'm trying this out, see how these kind of make, I don't know if these knots are actually helping me or hindering me at the top, to be honest. Maybe if I take it through the bottom. Under. 
and over. That's your mantra. And through. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. So see, they're small. Get that in there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this chord combination is my jam, right? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna say. I don't think that this this chord. See, because there are the knots, but you can't really see them. That's not that same definition like this, right? So, it was a good try, a good experiment. But I'm going to take this out. I'm just going to slide that up right there because maybe that's maybe I want to keep that together. Yeah, it's a good thing I got this high def camera on the day that I do these knots, right? So you guys can really see them. So let me go. Let's see how it looks with that little bit. Let's look at Sorry, I really do have brain freeze when I start this, don't I? Underneath. I think the beginning, you guys, is just a little... Uh, it's just a little fiddly, and you're just going to have to fiddle with it until you get there. Over and under and through that knot, that loop. There we go. And... Well, I'm just going to keep going with this one because it's established. And it's ready to go. Okay. Put that one out of my mind. And let's keep going on our friend over here. I'm going to do a few more so you can see it. And then... I know, this is so Natasha. I know, it is hard to follow. I think what I'm going to do for you guys, and I think it'll be a little bit easier, is I think that these need some like close-up steps for this knot. Um, obviously, I need them too, right? So it's we're going to go back to our under and over and through. and our under and over and through. But I just wanted to test that out to see if it worked, but so thanks for sticking with me. Okay, and so again, see how they cross? You're just gonna keep them. So over and under and through and under and over. And through. I don't know why my hands want to do it on this one, but they didn't want to do it on my other one. Over and 
under and through. Now I want to show you the transition here under and over and through. And I've got some screenshots here. And what I think I'll do is, and I'll work on it later this week for you guys, and I'll have Drea put up a little, um, just a little diagram of this so that you're not struggling like I am here. I think you just need a good step out at the beginning. So I'll take care of that. Let's put a bead on though, okay? So, because um, why not add some more madness, right, to this? Okay, because, you know, I mean, I, I don't, whatever, you know, I'm going to show you the when it's easy and when it's hard. We don't whitewash anything here, right, you know. So here's this. I put this guy on, so I've gone the over and under and through. Now I put my shadow on, and now I'm going to go under and over and through that loop. And when I tighten... This little shadow bead should sit, I mean, come on now, look at that. Let's do another one over here. And I'm going to go over and under and through and under. Whoops, nope, I want to add a bead. That's what I get for like doing kind of this random amalgamation of, of things <laughs> over. Uh, the second one is under. Good thing I had my notes over and through. Okay. And like you guys saw, check yourself when you do this because you guys saw a little further back how my left hand side was a little funky. Right, it was a little weird. So you notice, so check as you go along to make sure that these little sections are meeting. So see here, 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 and here with these beads. Okay, let me do another one. And with the leather, with this one millimeter, or 1.5 millimeter rather, um, and it's crossed this way. The 1.5 millimeter gives you kind of that open lace. And you saw that Chinese knotting cord. It just, it didn't work. I didn't love it. Over and under and through. The knotting, I'm knotting up. And then put on a bead. And then I knot towards the bottom. Under and over and through. And that little shadow bead wants to, it's a regular shadow, not a little one, but it wants to move around a little bit. But there we go. And I don't know, I, they're kind of an interesting addition. I think, though, I might like it better without the bead, maybe. I don't know. There's always a variation. There's always something to kind of play around with. And then I go under and over and through. Okay. So there you have it. Now let me show you these um, photos that I have here. Okay. And... Gina is saying, and this is a good one too, I could use one large hold bead to go through both pieces. I could use a large hold bead up here. That's a really good idea, Gita. You could put like that, um, the sand cast that's up at the top. That would look great. But let me show you these um, photos here. And so I want to show you this ending photo. So see what I did as I, and I'm just going to end this guy here. 
um, on my board, but I'll show you. So see, you can see what I've done here as I'm finishing. And as you get towards the bottom of this piece, you start to draw it in a little bit more tightly. So let me clamp this to the board. Let me um, get this set up and I'll show you how I do that, okay? So once you have, yeah, or, a st and my mom is asking, could you also put a bead in the X? You could, Ma, if the bead had a large enough hole. I think you could. So you could play with this, you know, and obviously this is going to take you, I would recommend, as I did, to make this on kind of a practice piece and then see kind of what floats your boat with it. Um, but again, it's that start where you want to um, you want to come in, and if you want something that goes, um, what do I want to say? That 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 clamps this all together. Um, you you could do that, right? So. Um, but this. I'm going to grab something here. I'm going to grab a length of my Chinese knotting cord. And we're going to start to taper. And I'm going to um, take, I'm actually going to get rid of these guys here because I need it to taper and tighten a little bit with these beads. But I just wanted to show you how those guys would look. And you can consult on the web, you can consult the project map and take a look at how this went together. All the different variations of the different wraps. So you can follow along that way. Okay, so here, let me just tighten. I'm going to make a couple more stitches that are plain over and under and through. And see my knot comes up at the top. That's the other thing I was doing. I wasn't coming up over at the top, and then this one goes under. I go under and over, and it knots at the bottom and tighten. But it's the two lark's head knots that are tied on each side of this. Oh, whoops. I didn't complete. I should have just completed this one. Under and over and through. And under and over and through. There we go. Now I'll do one more that I'll tighten it up. This crosses this way. So over, tie the knot up towards the top, over. And under and over and through. And this one. Over. And the where you stick this thread, you'll see at the cord, my over, I stick it in between this loop and that cord right there. And it comes around and it goes under. And then where you put your cord your second time, see it always goes between that loop and your bottom cord. That makes it a lot clearer for you, I think. Okay, so as you bring this in and tighten, I'm just gonna tighten this a little bit more. And your different leathers, like the Distressed Rose leather was a little less springy than this leather is here. So you can make it, it came out, I think maybe a little more tight, my tension. Just make your tension consistent. But see, here we go. Now we're nice and, it's nice and tight and it looks pretty even here. So see how I've kind of brought this down and tapered it down a little bit here, and it's tapered up here as well. 
Okay, so now you can finish this off. It looks nice just like this, I think. This is only, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six sets of knots, I think, is what this is. I think it looks nice. So I'm going to bring this in and I cut another piece of Chinese knotting cord and I'm prepping to go into um, my next laddering here. Okay, so as I bring these in, I'm going to cut, I don't know, maybe like 10 inches or so of Chinese knotting cord. And I get my I have just a short piece here, but I've used KO, okay, for my laddering, for my infinity stitch, actually. And what I do is the needle goes to the center, and I go to this end here. And I bring this all together. And what I did was, this was actually a little bit easier. I set this aside because as I was doing this, and I was doing it again, and it was going to be frustrating for sure, I brought all of this together, and I tied my first couple of macrame knots. And I came in, and see, I tightened that one. And then I did my second one and tightened that one. This could also be um, wax linen, maybe. You could do this if you wanted to have it be wax linen instead of Chinese knotting cord. But once it was established like this and tight, okay, then what I did was I grabbed a little bit of hypo cement and my baggie. And a little bit there, just on the inside, and then a little bit on the outside. And I shoved kind of the tip of that GS Hypo right underneath there. Okay. Now, this is a pretty cool trick, you guys. I thought that I was pretty darn clever. What I did was I just sent my needle underneath here like right in the center of that macrame. Let me grab it with my plier. So then, see how I sewed it in right here? Now I've got my tails here, and I can continue to macrame, but I'm macrame now over that cord and that cord isn't giving me any sass. At least something isn't on this project to start it. Okay. And now what I do is I'm going to take away one and make sure you take away the right ones, right? I'm going to cut here and here so they're not quite together, and I'm going to macrame over those tails. And it leaves me with the two base. These are the base cords, okay? These that I cut away were the ones that I did the knots with, if that makes sense. And I'm going to continue. Let me reseat this on the board so it's straight. I'm going to continue to do my macrame, and it's going to go over that section. This is also, you guys, if you wanted to change leather, base leather, in a project. doesn't have to be this project. It could be any project. This is how you do it. You'd lay, you'd have your wrap bracelet leather coming from the top and your new wrap bracelet leather coming from the bottom. They'd meet underneath here under the macrame and you'd make the change you'd make the exchange and you would just macrame over it have the tails maybe sitting out on either side of the macrame and then cut them away 
You could use like a couple of crimps for that transition too, if you wanted. The big actual transition crimps would also work. Or the Evolve crimps, depending on the size of leather that you're using. But see how then this tapers down just a hair. like this. That looks about right. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of hypo cement here and here. I should have maybe laid down a little bit underneath this Chinese knotting cord, but that's okay. I'll put it in on the back. And I'll let that sit. And if this were real jewelry making time and not demo time, I would go ahead and um, let those sit before I use my thread burner to burn them away. Okay, and so now you're ready to start your laddering. And so we begin by just doing the infinity stitch. Oh, here they are. It's like, where are my beads? And you can decide you need to kind of, you know, taper it up. And so that's what I did here with these eight dots, right? Tapered it up and then started in with my half tilas and my eight dots and my bugles. So I would bring it here. And just as a reminder, okay, I... I'm going to get a little tighter here so you guys can see this. I come in from underneath and slide that bead in. Okay, so everything is under. Then I go back through the bead. And then I stitch it in place by passing my needle through one more time. Right, so I come around the outside go through my a dot and so now we're establishing that infinity stitch I go through I pass my needle under the leather back through my a dot and see here if you get that little bit of bubble thread just pull it tight then I pass under the leather and I go to my two And stitch those in. I'm using a size 10 sharp for this needle. You could use a regular size 10 beading needle if you wanted or the color eye needles or whatever it is that you like. I like these sharps because they're short and they're easy for my fingers to manipulate. But we have a lot of great skill builders on how to do this and that's what I'll do for that um, the lace knot I will just shoot a couple, a few photos and do a little skill builder and I'll have Drea put it in the newsletter for you guys, um, a link to it, but it'll be under, uh, it'll probably be under Kate's Classic Knots is where it will be. And again, I'm sorry for struggling a little bit earlier. Sometimes when you think you have it cemented in your head and then you're like, wait a minute, what did I do here? So. Sorry about that, but you know, it happens to all of us. So now, once you have widened your leather, and again, that little tip, see how on this side, and that's why some people don't love the infinity stitch, because it can get a little wonky like this. One side of your stitches are just going to look different than your other side and it's just kind of from the tension of your needle etc but see how I came in with the tip of my awl and that now I'm going to pull this tight now everything looks a lot nicer and a lot neater you want to try infinity stitch has a tendency to want to go diagonal it just does that's how it is but if you establish it early on and have it go across nice and tight like this it'll look pretty good and so you've got that what Janice likes to say air in the piece 
Again, this bead looks a little bit wonky, but it just needs the other bead next to it to let it sit correctly. So I'm going to fly through a couple of more tips of this because we did spend an awful long time on this lace knot business. Um, and I still even see, I see a place that's a little bit off on this too, right here. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I think it's, I think it's delicious in this denim leather. And so even doing this short patch, you don't have to do a long one, even doing a short one on your wrap, I think will look really cool, right? So um, I'll come in and the tails of that uh, KO, I'll cut that away. Um, and so this is complete and ready to go. I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I want to show you guys how I used, well, you can see it here. And I'm not going to stitch these in, but you can see it, how this is, right? I just come in with the... Um, with the bugle bead and then the tila beads. What you want to remember about these tila beads, though, that it's a two-hole bead, right? So you're going to stitch through the top and then back through the top and then drop to the second um, bead hole and go through and then go back. Okay, so treat each bead hole as a going to the right and then coming back and going to the left so that each of those are stitched in independently if that makes sense, okay? Oh, Emily's just popping in. Em, you missed my feet of clay earlier, but um, I'm glad to have your bracing presence here. Um, and this, Emily, is just in time because maybe her ears were burning. I want to talk about this section of the um, patterning here. And Emily, so generously with her broadcasts, uh, has done a whole bunch of looming um, or not looming, but seed bead charts, okay? And I wanted to show you, I downloaded the loom weaving chart to chart out this section of my piece. And so what I did, and I'm going to move this over so you guys can see it, and I'll talk to you about how I did this one. So this loom weaving and the wrap bracelet are the same, right? It's the same kind of layout here, okay? And so what I did was I assigned a legend, because I did it in black and white, so I could use this with any bead color. And my little legend here is the bubble that's bubbled in is a, one of the brown beads, the two lines is the peach, and the open oval is the red. So you can see this first row, there is a peach, a red, a brown, a peach, uh, sorry, a peach, a red, a brown, a red, a peach. And you can see that here. That's this row. And then this row, we just move the brown one over. So we've got the red the brown, the peach, the brown, the red. And then the final row is the brown ones on the outside. So we've got the brown, the peach, the red in the center, the peach one, and then the, um, the red. This is actually watermelon instead of the peach color. But this design is essentially a five across by three row grid, if that makes sense. Okay, and you just continue to repeat this motif, and that's what gives you this chevron. Then here in the center, I finished off this chevron, the chevron section right here, this section of three. And then I used this brown. I thought the brown that this section looked nice. So I did one, two, three rows of that. The, the same with that the brown seed being in the center. And then I just reversed what I did here. So um, it was the opposite. Instead of, you know, this way, you could actually even just flip this over so that your chevron is going the opposite direction like this, right? And then you just follow that down. Okay, and that's and that's all she wrote, really. So this loom weaving, if you wanted to create any kind of a pattern, um, what you could do, here's my little ruler. 
is you could say, okay, I'm going to use a five across. So here's this five. Let's just do it right here. One, two, three, four, five. And it ends like right here. Okay. So you'll have your little motif box right here. Okay, you can see that. Then, how many rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to, I don't know, maybe, maybe I have a chevron going this way up here and this way up here. This is kind of how I started to plot it out a little bit. And then maybe you want some kind of a design that's going down like this. And here maybe like this. And then you have something, this is the center row here like this. Okay, so you could start plotting out like, okay, this is my diamond design. So this, you know, maybe these are all the same color. So, and you could use colored pencils, but I just used what I had at hand. So I made a little legend of, you know, what my, what my beads look like. Okay. And so then maybe there's a color in there, right? And then maybe this is another color, right? And this is that other color right here. And then that's the, the flower pattern in the center. So you can see how those kind of come up. So I could repeat this pattern, you know, and then these could be that, whatever that, the this is red, if we're going by what I used, this open circle is the red. These could all be red here, out here, so that your pattern would actually stop right here. So you could repeat this pattern down. So it's just a kind of a fast and easy way. I mean, there are computer programs and stuff that help you do this. But, and see what I did was I wrote my little legend down there. But of course, Emily gave us this nice project name thing and stuff that I didn't fill out. So what a surprise. Ask my high school teachers how I didn't follow directions. So yeah, I wrote my little notes there at the bottom. But you know, whatever works for you. So that's kind of how I plotted this out. And I think that this kind of look in a wrap bracelet like this, especially one that has a little bit more of a boho vibe, um, really, um, really adds a lot to your design. So I encourage you really to try this out and grab this loom weaving template from Bead Shop and just plot your little pieces together. And you can see this five, um, five row, this gives me, it's about a half an inch of uh of beadwork there it's about it's about half an inch or so these five across and this is again the 1.5 millimeter leather that i used for the base um i also wanted to show you then on this piece real quick before we finish off <clears throat> the loops that I did this section now you can also like with this section here and I'm just going to slide this off because I can I'm going to clip it because I want to do that with this so let me go here and very carefully clip that away and pull this off. Now, let me get rid of, I so carefully added my thread in. And these, I think it's time to thread burn. So I'm going to do that just real quick to get them out of my way. We're going to go just a hair long, you guys, because I did have that little bit of an issue with my not okay so here are my rings okay and these we carry in we carry the the old school ones the circles of bronze which i like a lot 
But then in these new rings, we call them circles of copper, circles of brass, and circles of silver, I think. These are contemporary, and they're a little more regular and a little more even than the circles of bronze. Um, but you could use either, right, for this. So the way that I started this was I simply came in and started weaving these in. So I get my bronze bead, and this is great in a wrap where you want to take up a lot of time and you want to make it faster so you want to speed up your time i guess is what i want to say janice just texted something in it <laughs> it distracted me um and uh and you can make this, it takes up a lot of length in your piece. It makes it fast too. So you can see I've just put down my little circle. And now I used, I chose the Russian blues. Now the Russian blues, you get a bunch of them in your baggie. And some of them have big holes and some of them have small holes. So what you want to do is you want to kind of make sure, put aside the ones that the leather fits through. Okay, and if they don't fit through, um, you know, you're going to have to kind of search around a little bit for the, for the ones that fit in there. But look at how pretty this looks. And then what I would do if your blues are a little small, like let's say, like see this one looks a little small. What you can do is you can side, you can angle cut your leather, which I'm going to do here. And I'm going to do here. If you're liking these new little wire cutters we've gotten, these are going to debut in August. I've been playing around with them. And I just love them. Let's see if I can get these angled cut pieces. Let's put in one and let's follow it with the other. And sometimes, see, all it needs is that little angle. And see how that peeks through? You just kind of wiggle it until they both come through like that. Okay. I didn't put a circle on, but I'll just slide this back. I'll slide this up. You don't have to have just one in there. You could have two. But just make sure, especially if your knots are tight, you want to make sure that the tension in your circles is even. Okay. So I'm going to go through one way of the circle, then through the opposite way of the circle. Like this and like this. Pull them tight. And there you go. Now you could also, you guys, macrame in between these. You could silk wrap in between these. A silk wrap with um, wax linen, Irish wax linen would look amazing here, right? And just keep this going as long as you want to keep it going, okay? Now I want to show you something. Um, this will be the last thing I'll show you, then I'll show you the end, and then we'll bring this to a close. But I wanted to share this tip with you here. Okay, so what I did for this one was I started up here at the end, right? And I started macrame down, macrame down. And then I started to run out of thread, okay? And I actually panicked a little bit. And there's no reason to panic when you're running out of thread. And so I gave myself a stern talking to. And I thought, let me look at this as an opportunity to think about also how long and, you know, how long I want this section to be. So what I did was I measured, where's my little, well, here's my tape measure. This section itself is almost exactly six inches. You see that? So, and I kind of worked it out in here and counted and figured out how many sections I had here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of these little units fit in this six inch section with these little triangle of spacing up and spacing down with the eight dots. So what I did was I stopped and let me show you this picture because this will make sense. Hmm. So what I did was when I was running out of thread, you can see that I was like, oh boy. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm actually going to measure how long I want this to be, put in my macrame and start it from the other side and have the two meet in the center like the great railroads did from the west coast and the east coast right and i drove the golden spike right in the center right when i when i finished it so what i did i'll take this off here is i turned it around put my macrame on here buried my macrame thread or buried my KO here right and laddered down and then I really was paid attention to like how much space I had and how much I measured but essentially if this is six inches door to door I had 17 of these you could if you wanted at the beginning I don't like to measure more than or work with more than a yard of thread at a time. And so you really need like two yards of thread doubled. So that's actually four yards and then doubled down. So it's two yards to get through all of this. This takes about two yards of KO doubled. But I just, it, it tangles on me. I have trouble. So just turning it around, starting your macrame from here and having a meet in the middle and then what I did was I just wove off. I'll get a little tight so you can see this. I came down and then once they met, I just came in and I weaved this thread like in the beads only, not around the sides. And then this needle came up from the bottom and wove through those bead holes only and then came out this side. So I had a needle coming out here and a needle coming out here, and then I clipped them. And that was it. Super easy. So let me show you that photo one more time so you can kind of cement that in your mind. This is the time to take your screenshot, um, Christine Whitney. Um, but I let them meet. And that really was a neat solution, I thought. Um, for adding thread though you could just come in and do that same thing as you go you stop with your needle come back up here weave some more thread through have it come out where your needle is coming out clip off your old needle and then keep going you could do that too but I wanted to try that to see how it worked okay and it worked out just fine then the last thing I wanted to share with you when I finished off this chevron right here and I had it come down and I went one beads, two, three, and four, and then it went up to the five. It came down, I got my Chinese knotting cord, right? Came through, did two sets of square knots, slid on my Jardin crimp, and then I put my Chinese knotting cord through that Jardin crimp as well, okay? Brought it out the bottom, macrame, 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 glued it off, let it sit, and that was it. And then at this point right here, this is where I stopped this thread that I was doing the infinity stitch with and added another thread to do this laddering with. So this is where I changed that thread there. So again, go a little more, go about two yards, double it for four and half it. So you'll have plenty to ladder with. Or if you're like me and prefer using a shorter piece of thread, you can do it in the the two yard increments so it's doubled over for a yard and then I just repeated that down there at the bottom finished it off with the macrame went through that Jardin crimp macrame macrame went all of this through the sand cast came out macrame macrame glued it down here at the end so that's how it was finished pretty simple and then I had a little bit of open air right there so I came in and I closed these up here and here and it was all good so that's it um i hope uh you know 
<laughs> I'm sorry about that little bit of an issue in the center there, but it did tell me that you guys uh, would benefit from just a quick little skill builder. So I'll have that up for you soon on this. By the time uh, your materials arrive, uh, I should have it. And it'll be under classic Kate knots. Um, but again, it's just the two Lark's heads that are the ins on the inside that are going towards the inside on the left and towards the inside on the right. So if you're accomplished at knowing how to do those Lark's heads, that should be pretty simple for you. So um, let me show me. <laughs> we got through it. We did. We did. We did. There I am. Um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> let me get a bracing drink of coffee here. I'm going to exchange his coffee for gin in just a second. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. It was really super fun. Um, to do this. And I hope you love this wrap. And again, I'm sorry about that little blip in the center, but it, it, it's all, you know, it just shows uh, that, you know, I didn't come out fully formed as a jewelry designer. We always, we always have our little uh, fits and starts. Um, but I did want to remind all you all that uh, you can find us on beadshop.com at our Instagram. Uh, follow us and join us in our group on Facebook, The Bead Table, and like and subscribe uh, to uh, beadshop.com uh, on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much for sticking in there, sticking with us on that. Um, we really uh, appreciate your support and your likes and your shares because without you guys, we would not be here. And I also wanted to mention, um, we have our uh, Ruby sales going on right now. Um, and so you can um, use those coupons right on our, uh, they're right on the homepage as well. But 20% um, off orders of $50 or more or 25% off orders 150 or more. Um, and if you're watching this live, those are live right now. So you can use that Ruby 20. If you miss those Ruby 20 sales, you guys, you can come in and go to beadshop.com, find all of the information on the project. This one's called Festival and the products um, from today's broadcast right on our website. You can sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. So if you're watching this and you're all, hey, that coupon code doesn't work, go right to our website. We usually have something on the homepage or make sure that you're signed up, you guys, on our newsletter. Our newsletter is the best way to uh, stay connected uh, for communication from us. Now, I have a couple of things coming up this Friday. Sign up for that newsletter and open that newsletter early because we're trying something new here at beadshop.com. What I love about Janice is when I come up with a harebrained scheme, she and Drea are like, yes, do it. So we'll see how this works. I don't know. I think it's going to be rad. So join me on Friday, free tip Friday for Kate's rad free tip Friday. Then next week, um, we are going to have uh, a wire play day on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to get out my wire. I'm going to get out my pliers and I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to reach way back into the vault and I'm going to teach you some of my wire tips and tricks. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really fun, I think kind of loose, wild and willy uh, uh, broadcast next week, but it'll really hone your wire skills, I think. Um, so that's all I've got for me today. Um, I see all of you all. I'm just making sure, again, thank you. You guys are um, really great to, uh, to hang out with me today on our live broadcast. And from all of us here at Bead Shop, um, I wanted to give a really heartfelt thank you. Um, because without you guys out there, who watch and support us, our small woman owned since 1982 team. Not all of us have been since here since 1982, but sometimes it feels like it. Um, we really appreciate it. It keeps us all gainfully employed and it keeps us doing what we love, bringing these projects to you. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. I'll see you 
Friday for a, a really fun free tip Friday. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you soon.